Hi, welcome to this Greg Space Shed lesson. In this video, I'm going to show you how every key has a minor and a major pentatonic scale that sounds great if you construct your riffs, your fills, and your bass lines from these scales. I'll also go into why knowing this is really great for you if you want to get creative with your bass playing. Pentatonic scales are really accessible. They're only made up of five notes, and once you've learnt their shape, you can take them over the whole fretboard. So they're really good for using to build up your fretboard knowledge. And once you know the scale, you can transpose it into any key. All the scales and the fret diagrams that you'll see in this lesson will be on a free PDF, and you can get that by clicking the link below this video in the description. So there'll be the fret diagrams, and there'll be the exercises in tab and standard notation. We're going to start this lesson by looking at the G major pentatonic scale. Now we're going to start on the third fret of the E string for this scale. So this is the fret diagram for the scales. So just have a look at that now. So we've got five notes and we also put a G on the top as well, so that gives us six notes. Now penta means five, so that's why it's a five note scale. Now play this shape until you're really comfortable with the position, so... Okay, so I start with my first finger and then I jump along to the A with my first finger as well. Now there is another way to play this scale. Okay, and it's more usual to kind of use that position if you're playing like a walking line. That kind of walking line. But if you're gonna use licks and fills, um, then this position is much better. You can also play this scale two octaves. So we played it one octave and then you just stack that on top and carry on right up to G on the 12th fret of the G string. So this is what the fret diagram looks like. So you start with the same notes that you played before and then just carry on with that shape. Now you play the G there, slide along to the G, okay? Now it's sometimes difficult to remember um, where the notes are when you come back down when you're playing the scale descending. Um, so just take your time slowly and work that out with the PDF. We're now going to play E minor pentatonic. Okay, so we're going to change from major to minor so we have a different shape. Okay, and we're going to start on the seventh fret of the A string. This is what the fret diagram looks like. Okay, so we start with our first finger on E. So we're playing one, four, change string, one, three, change string, one, three, okay? So again, it's got five notes with the E on top, making it six. So it's a different sounding scale. Now there's a second way to play this, just like we had two positions for the um, G major pentatonic, okay? So what we want to do is start with your third finger on E, the same E, and we play the second note here, okay? So that's a G. Instead of playing the G here, we're playing it here, okay? And we carry on. Okay. So we play E, G, and then slide along. Okay, so that's another way to play E minor pentatonic. Now if you take away the E, you might recognize this shape. Okay, because that's part of the G major pentatonic. So remember G major, and then this bit we had here. Okay, so if you put an E on that, and we carry on would go all the way up there. Okay, so we've got the same notes in G pentatonic as E minor pentatonic. So this is what they look like written down side by side. Now the reason for this is that G major and E minor 
are related keys. So every major key has a related minor key which share the same notes, the same sharps and flats. Okay, now there's an easy way to find the relative minor from a major key. You just go down three frets. So if you're on G, say here, okay, one, two, three, we get an E, that's an E there. So you've got E is the relative minor. Now if you want to, if you had a relative, if you had a minor key and you wanted to find a relative major, just go up three um, frets. So say you're on E minor, one, two, three, G. Okay, so this is really useful information to know. Okay, so both of those scales are related and share the same notes. If you're enjoying this video, then don't forget to like it and to subscribe. And if you click the bell, then you'll get notified of all my new lessons. At this stage, if you haven't done so, then I suggest that you learn all the 12 keys, all the major keys, because once you've learned those keys, then you can work out the relative minor, the way I showed you going down three frets. Okay, so there's no kind of shortcut really to learning the keys, but it's really useful. You know what sharps and flats you're going to have and what notes to expect. Now, knowing that there's two scales for each key is really useful because say you're in E minor, just kind of jamming, you could put a kind of a riff in with G. So that's the kind of, that's a G major pentatonic. Okay, so that sounds kind of slightly different. It just gives you some different options. So the minor. Okay, so that's kind of very much the E minor shape. Okay, so you've got two options. You can kind of give you kind of different shapes in which you can get creative with. I tackle this pentatonic idea a little bit in my little wing um, lesson, the Stevie Ray Vaughan version. Um, so I'll put a link up here now if you want to check that out. So there's a couple of licks there that Tommy Shannon's playing that very much kind of in the E minor, he plays a kind of G major pentatonic idea. So you'll get um, a real life example in that lesson. Now we'll go back to the G major pentatonic two octaves. If you remember, it was like this. Okay, now we can put a low E on that. So just play the same thing with open E. And then that's E minor pentatonic, okay? Remember that I've put all the scales and fret diagrams from this lesson in a PDF booklet. You can get that for free by clicking the link below in the description. So I suggest that you learn these two scales, E minor pentatonic and G major pentatonic, and really play around and see how the shapes work. And once you're comfortable with that, then move on to different scales and their relative minors. Okay, so you could do, for example, C major pentatonic and step down three frets. So we play C there. One, two, three, and you've got A minor, so then you'd use A minor pentatonic. Okay, and start, it really kind of increases your fretboard knowledge, gets you around the whole instrument, so it's a really useful exercise for that as well. I'm now going to list a few keys. Now, if it's a major key, you've got to find the relative minor, step down three frets, and if it's a minor key, you've got to find the relative major, step up three frets. Okay, so I'm just going to list a few keys. Now in the PDF booklet on the last page, I've given you the answers. Okay, so um, you might want to pause the video after each one, but hopefully I'll give you enough time. So see if you can work out the relative major or minor. Well, I hope this lesson was useful to you. Learning this type of music theory is really relevant to your playing because you can use it to directly spice up your bass lines. So don't be afraid of learning music theory. It can really help you, okay? Um, if you haven't looked at it already, then check out my Walk the Blues video course because I go into more depth about pentatonic scales, different scales, and especially blues playing in that video course. Um, so I'll put the link below in the description as well.
Don't forget to get the free PDF and to subscribe to my channel. And if you found that you got some good use out of this lesson, then you can always buy me a coffee. The link's across here, or you can actually, there's a clickable link in the description. So that just keeps these videos and PDFs free for everyone. Now, I always love to hear how you get on with the lesson, so leave me a comment below and let me know. Um, was this mind-blowing for you when I first found out that you had these kind of two scales and the relative major and minor that you could use together? It was amazing. I couldn't believe it. Um, but you might have already known that. Um, let me know in the comments, and if you've got anything else that you're struggling with in your base plan, then let me know, and I can always make a lesson on it. This is Greg from Greg Space Shed. See you very soon in the next lesson. Mm -hmm.